In previous videos, we talked about how energy can be transferred by things such as sound, light or electrical energy, or in ways such as conduction, convection and radiation. Another way that you can transfer energy is by doing work. Work done is the same as energy transferred, therefore it's measured in joules. The equation to work out work done, or energy transferred, is work done in joules is equal to force in newtons multiplied by distance in metres. For example, by lifting the weights, the lady is doing work against gravity. We could calculate the energy that she's transferring, or the work done, by carrying out this equation. For example, if she lifted these weights with a force of 500 newtons upwards for 2 metres, the work done would equal 1000 joules. Or you could equally write that as 1 kilojoules. When it's too difficult for a human to do work in terms of pushing or lifting an object, we have invented simple machines to help us. Levers are examples of simple machines. Simple machines help reduce the force needed to move or lift things. They are force multipliers. In order for this man to be able to lift this box, he is using a lever. Here is the pivot for the lever. The man is going to apply the force at a distance which is far from the pivot. This is because the man can apply a small force to this end of the lever downwards through quite a large distance. If you remember, work done equals force times distance. Here he is applying a small force across a large distance to do work. At this end of the lever, the lever will only move a short distance up, but the amount of work done or energy transferred stays the same. So here there will be a much larger force applied to the box to lift it upwards. This is why we call it a force multiplier. The man can apply a small force across a larger distance here and the box will move up with a larger force across a smaller distance and at both ends the work done will be the same. Here are some examples of some levers in everyday life. So you've got levers to help you operate machinery. To operate this machinery there is quite a long lever and you would apply the force here to pull this lever downwards. By having this lever, it means the force that you need to apply is much less than if you had a much shorter handle and had to push down on here. And again, on your bike, if you pull at this end of the lever and apply your force across this distance, it is a lot easier than if you try and apply your force here across this distance. Gears are also examples of simple machines. There is a gear system on a bike with different sized gears to choose from. You can use gears to change force, direction or speed. On a bicycle there are two sets of gears. The front set are connected to the pedals and the rear set is connected to the rear wheel. On each set there are different sized gears and you can change the combinations of these depending on whether you're going uphill or downhill and depending on how fast you want to go. When going uphill, it's best to choose the smallest gear at the front and the largest gear at the rear. As the front gear is small, it means it takes less force to turn one full rotation of the pedals, like so. However, because this gear is a lot smaller, it means the rear wheel will not rotate fully around because we've set that to a larger gear. So this wheel might only go partially way around. So to turn the wheel one full rotation you might need to turn the pedal three or four times. 
The hardest and the fastest gear combination is to have the largest gear selected at the front and the smallest gear selected at the back. With this selection, you would have to apply a larger force on the pedal to rotate the pedals through one full rotation. However, because you have a larger gear at the front that you've rotated fully once and a much smaller gear at the back, it could mean, for example, that for every rotation of the pedals, the back wheel might actually move round three or four times. This means that despite it being harder to pedal, you will go a lot faster. Some machines use several gears connected together. When you turn one gear, the adjacent gear will turn in the opposite direction. For example, if we start at this green gear here, if we were to turn this clockwise, the adjacent gear would turn anti-clockwise and the one next to that would turn clockwise and so on. So some more complex machines might use a combination of different gears to change the force applied, the speed or the direction of another moving part. Hi guys, if you enjoyed that last video then please click on the screen to subscribe. You can also find all my videos in one place at gccrevisionmonkey.com. If you're a teacher, check out the Key Stage 3 package at sciencesurgery.com. It contains all of the Revision Monkey videos as well as loads more Key Stage 3 resources.